Welcome to Beneath the Surface, where faith and reason meet, where we attempt to bring a little sanity into our age of insanity, a little life into our culture of death. I'm Paul Morano, your host of Beneath the Surface, and there he is to my left and your right, Mr. Bob LeBlanc. Bob, how are you? I'm doing all right. Yeah? Being you, yeah. Is, li being you is like... Being loot me is like One word. living out a mystery. <laughs> that is a great answer. I always wonder what answer I'm, I'm, I get when I'm going to, you know, when I ask that question. That was a very good one. All uh, right. Well, let us live out this mystery together for the next hour. All right. All right. With the rest of our audience, my fellow mystery lovers, tonight we delve beneath the surface on the question of what is faith. The question mm. of what is faith. And if you're a Christian, you understand that without it, there is no salvation. So this is one of the more important questions that one can ask. Now, Bob, you and I are going to delve beneath the surface on this question because there are various angles which we can attack this question. And hopefully by the end, we'll have a full understanding beneath the surface of what faith might be. I yes. hope so. I find the word faith to be very mysterious. Yes. And uh, may Our Lady of Fatima, whose feast day happens to be today, uh, right. the, the day that we are uh, recording this uh, radio show, may she intercede for us in her prayers. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. All right. Mr. Bob. Yes, I've got um, I've got three subtopics on the question of what is faith, and we can either choose one of these right now or go with something that's on your mind. Okay. So my three subtopics are, topics are this: faith as a supernatural virtue, faith as a faith as distinct from belief, and faith as one of the three avenues to truth, or the three avenues or the three ways to certitude. So. As a supernatural virtue, as distinct from belief, and as one of the three avenues to truth or ways to certitude. Which of those three, if any at this moment, would you like to begin with? Actually, none of the above. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll wait for those because I really want to delve into those. But what do you okay. got? What do you, would you like to start with? Well, I, I would just actually want to start off with trying to tackle the definition of the word. Yeah. And, and, and to tell you the truth, I find this to be a difficult word to pin down. Really? Um, yes, absolutely. We've, uh, talk, we've talked in the past about other words, other religious words that are difficult to pin down, one of which we've talked about in the past is glory. Yes. Um, and there are a few others like bless, but we, those, those are for other shows, which I look forward to doing with you. Okay. But, this, but this one is faith. So why don't you tell us what, um, begin with how, how difficult or what difficulty you have with it? Well, um, at least I know in the uh, English language, uh, we use faith um, um, as a noun and a verb. Yes. Um, Just like so, love, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so... I'm I'm not sure that I want to talk about faith as much as a noun, but I I think I can dispense with that relatively quickly. I think. So um, then, so then I think what you're saying is in Eng in English we speak about the faith, which is the right. noun, and we speak about having faith, which is the verb. So right. you want so the faith is the content or the object of what our faith, which is the verb believes in right right absolutely okay. all right so then we'll put aside the faith which is basically the creed and the moral doctrines of the church and so forth we'll put those aside for the show or or if we were talking uh, about another religion you know yeah. th th we were talking about the content of that particular religion of that the faith of that religion right all right so then we'll we'll put aside content or the noun and we'll speak about what it means to have faith yeah and that, there you get into a lot of tricky things because people use the word faith in almost contrary ways. Okay. Um, uh, the, the, I think uh, I, I did a little bit to prepare for this. Uh, uh, the two big sources that I'm, I'm using here is one is Joseph Pieper, who talks about 
uh, faith in a from a philosophical sort of perspective. Okay. And my other source, major source, um, is actually from Bishop Barron. He he came out with a book based on a Google talk that he he made. He talked to the employees at Google, and he was talking about. Uh, uh, the book is called Arguing Religion, um, and it's a series of talks. The first um, chapter uh, talks about faith, and if I had bought the book, uh, somebody gave the book to me, uh, I think maybe to, uh, as a lend out kind of thing. If I had bought the book, it would have been worth the price of the book just for the first few pages of this book. I want you to sum it up, uh, the, the point that you want to make about faith with regard to this book. Um, all right, I, I guess. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure of the order that I want to attack this in. Um, okay. Uh, so, yeah, I think, I guess it's good to go this way. It's good to go with Bishop Barron first. Good old um, Bishop Barron. Yes, good old Bishop Barron. I don't know if you recall a while back on Facebook, we, huh. we, we, both you and I went into this discussion about whether we have faith in the senses. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, uh, a lot of people, uh, the people that we know that kind of engage in a rationalism or scientism, you know, kind of went, no, that's impossible. We don't, have faith in that. Um, but what Bishop Barron brought up was the process of faith. And, and he used an interpersonal example, but I like the, tr the, the idea of the senses, uh, at use, having faith in our senses, trusting our senses. Well, I think, I think that's very important. That's where all human beings begin. That's right. where babies begin. We come out of the womb and the first thing we, we begin to trust is our senses. We, well, we experience our senses, but no, no person, no baby, no child under the age of reason uh, doubts their senses. And, right. and, and really no person over the age of reason other than radical skeptics, and you can talk about Descartes if you want later on, doubts, right. their, doubts their senses because their senses are our avenues to outside of ourselves, the reality outside of ourselves. But you have a huge point, yes. and that is we have, to, it, we have to unconsciously or implicitly trust our senses in order to move forward. So that, yes. that, is, a, that is definitely a, a very important form of faith. And, and to, to understand the process here, I think, because what we are doing when we have faith in our senses and, and I'm using this very consciously because people kind of think of faith as a blind faith. Right. A faith, uh, it's something where you don't accept. And this is the key point that I think Bishop Barron was trying to make in his book, Arguing Religion, yeah. is this, is, is that, no, 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 faith is not irrational but it's rather the first step you have to make in order to be rational at all. No question. I, that's huge. That um, is huge. I tell you so, what, right, go ahead. This, this relates to something I was going to say, but continue on your thought. So, so what's happening here is, is that we, we take a small little step of faith in trusting our senses, and then what we're doing as we live out our lives, we're verifying that our senses work in a particular way. Yes. So it, it is kind of like the scientific method in a way. We're, it we're, is. We're, we trust our senses and it seems to convey the truth to us. I think that's why we discovered the scientific method because it comes natural to the human being. Right, exactly. Yeah. But the, you know, the thing is, is that the scientific method did not spring up universally all over the world, wherever mankind was. It really, it really was a combination of Greek philosophy and and uh, Christian faith. That that there was a, a kind right. of blending of faith and reason that happened. And in, in the Middle Ages, you had this kind of 
certitude about the universe. You know, you, 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 you had this belief that you could know something about yes. the universe because that. you knew something about God. It wasn't just an illusion like some Eastern religions hold. Right. It's not something that's sort of just chaotic, that the mind cannot uh, grasp at all, like some uh, Eastern philosophies would hold, that we believe that the universe, that the cosmos, that everything that exists, uh, we are part of that. And through our minds, through our intellects, we can grasp and understand, or at least apprehend, the world around us, because the world around us has a certain logos or logic to it, and we are able to pick that up as human persons with a with an intellectual soul. Absolutely. So, yeah. so what we're doing, whenever we engage in the rational process, there is faith embedded into that rational process that we're engaging in, and the, and we're just talking yes. about faith at a natural level here. We're not really engaging no. in any, any supernatural sort of thing when and, we're talking about it. And, and I think this is a good place to, for, for 10 seconds, to in, insert uh, the, the whole notion of, uh, the whole thing of what Descartes did to make, make himself famous, that he completely went through a process of doubting everything, including his own senses. Right, right. He, he kind of thought of, uh, you know, what if God or this godlike being was or whatever created uh, deceptive. us deceptive yeah, yeah whoever created us was being deceptive and he right. was trying to trick us into right so so why should real. so why should i uh and it's a legitimate question on some degree why yeah. should i trust these five physiological senses that i am equipped with um why should i trust that they actually convey the objective truth outside of myself well, we, we have a great movie to demonstrate this. What's that? I, I don't know if you've ever watched The Matrix. Some of it. Uh, so I'll, I'll give the, story, the basic premise of the story. Okay, um, real quick. Uh, real quick is, is that, so this is some period in the future, and they start off the movie, and it looks like the 20th century, but this is mm. actually in the future, and this pro computer programmer is trying to figure out what is this matrix all about? And then he swallows this red pill and you hear this talk in the alt-right kind of thing, the red pill, blue pill. Yes. Kind of thing. I never fully understood it, but I, I, I have heard the terminology recently. So that is the choice that a person has to make. If he takes the red pill or I might have him reverse, but I think mm. if you take the red pill you, you become inserted into reality. The truth of everything is revealed. Okay. And what happens is, what's revealed is that the robots have kind of taken over the earth or something, a computer program has taken over the earth. Yeah. And what happens is people's brains, their senses are, are plugged into this computer program that displays reality for us. So we're not actually sensing the world as it is, Okay. But we're, we're experiencing this computer generated reality. And in taking the red pill, we're able to know that. Is that what you're saying? That's it. Okay. So if you take the blue pill, what happens? Well, you just live your life as you've been living in this matrix, matrix like reality. And, and is that, is that reality pleasant for these people? Um, no, it's not entirely okay. pleasant, All right. uh, uh, but it is not real. Uh, it's, but it's, but what you this kind of a little bit reminds me of that meme that you and I had shared once that uh, you have two booths and one one booth has um, uh, uncomfortable truths and there's there's nobody uh, going to that booth and the other one has uh, very pleasant uh, falsehoods and right, the, the right. line the line is about a mile long to that booth because everybody wants that but you're saying this isn't necessarily like that even though the truth and the falsehood are the same. Right, right. Okay. The, 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 yeah, it's, in the Matrix, it, it looks like our world in the 20th century. And I think what uh, the producers of the show is trying to introduce to us is the world that we're seeing in the 20th century, and this was the 20th century when the movie first came out, is this world in the 20th century that we're experiencing right now real? And, well, I mean, through, through the media, you can make an argument that it isn't. 
right? Yeah. So, so they're, they, they were, tr I think what they were trying to do was to insert this Eastern philosophy, this Eastern doubt into whether the world was real. Um, um, right. And, and so that was what the movie was about. And then they went on with the sequels, which kind of really diverged from that sort of thing. But it, the background was still the same. Okay. So uh, are we dealing with reality? And that is a huge question. And what we've been talking about for the last five or so minutes re reminds me of one of the three subtitles that I, the sub uh, topics that I wanted to talk to you about. So I'll just insert it here. Sure. Faith is one of the three avenues to truth, or at least one of the three ways to certitude. One is science or, or experience. Yeah. One is reason or the mind, the intellect, and the other is the senses. Uh, excuse me, that's the, that's the scientific method, the senses. The other is faith. So, right. you have, so you have faith, reason, and science, or faith, reason, and experience, or experiments. Um, we all begin with our senses. Question is, yeah. do, we, do we trust our senses, like we just talked about? Uh, if you're not a radical uh, uh, skeptic like, like uh, Descartes was for a point in his life, we all do. How else can we get from, you know, why, do we, why else do we get out of bed in the morning? We, we have to trust our senses to tell us what is true. Uh, the second question I think we have to ask is, why should we trust reason? Why should think, we trust our yeah. minds to give so, us truth? Yeah, um, Descartes famously mm. said, I think, therefore I am. Right. Um, and he thought he had reached rock bottom certitude, but I... I wonder about that, you know, what if the wiring in your brain is, yeah. is, is bad? It's not the problem with your senses, but rather, you know. Well, but basically I think what he's saying is something is happening here. My thinking is something. Yes. So since something is happening and I'm aware that something is happening, I must be. I th yes. I'm thinking, therefore I, I must be. I think therefore I am. Yeah. And you don't think that that's a good argument? <laughs> I, don't I don't think, I don't think, I don't think it, it reaches the certitude that Descartes was looking for. Okay. I mean, they, I, right. I, I can understand that. There, nobody short, short of God can have absolute certitude about our existence. Right. Yeah. I, and, and so I think, therefore, I am is, is actually maybe a little bit of a blasphemy here. <laughs> okay. And, and, and and if you look at it from a Christian sense, it is blasphemy. Uh, yeah, because really we think I am, therefore I think, and I can do a lot of other things too. But right. you, be, you begin with that faith premise, that belief that I exist. Right. So we have the senses, which we share with all the other animals. They, they experience the world through the five senses like we do. Then we have the intellect or the mind that's able to understand abstract truths and reason things out to come to a knowledge of the truth. That's something that's unique to humans on the earth. And then we have this thing that I believe, and I think that some studies said that's 80, something like 85% of all of our knowledge, all of what we're certain about comes through faith. Yes. And I'm not even just talking about faith in the senses and faith in the mind and the reasoning process. I'm yeah. talking about what is passed on to us. Uh, you know, some people call it tradition. Others just call it living and learning from parents first, right? Then from teachers, right. then from experts, from doctors, from, from books, from maps, from all of these things that you trust that you believe, that you don't experience with your five senses, and you can't figure it out with your intellect alone, you, you truly trust and believe a lot of people, and it takes about a before, it, it, uh, like, like the study says, approximately 85% of all of our knowledge comes through faith. Yeah, and I think this is a modern problem. Yeah. Um, uh, but I, I, I wanna bring a Chesterton quote into this because it, 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 it uh, it has bearing on this. Uh, Chesterton was, uh, and I'm, I'm going to mangle it, but it has to do with scientists. Paraphrase. And this is paraphrase. So um, 
you mentioned something about religion and people, you know, their eyes kind of glaze over. He's, he's a modern man as well. People's eyes, you know, glaze over. But you, and you say, you mentioned some sort of truth about religion. People's eyes glaze over. But if you say something like a scientist says, and yeah. all of a sudden people's ears perk up yeah. and, they, and, they, and they start saying, Oh, okay. I, I'm going to believe that because some scientists said this. What a level of faith people have in other human beings. Yes, absolutely. There is, there is this faith. Yeah. And, and of course, a person, a rationalist is going to say, well, I can verify that, that, that faith. And it is true to a certain extent, but who is actually going to fly to Australia to yeah. see that Australia is actually there. Yeah, or, and you know, you know, that's my uh, that's the example that I give my students usually. I say, how many people um, have been to Australia, and you know, nobody raises their hand. And I say, how many people believe Australia exists, and everybody raises their hand. And I say, well, if you've never been there, and you all are certain that it exists, why? Why? You, 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 let's go through the three. You didn't experience it with your five senses. You certainly can't figure it out intellectually that there must be a place on the other side of the world called Australia through your reason. It is your faith, faith in what other people told you, the teachers, the map makers, those on Discovery Channel or whoever. You have to believe these people. It takes a level of faith. So I think what we're getting at here, even before we get to religion, there's a whole lot of, we are a believing species. We, yes. we exist by virtue of believing other people. Well, think, think about this. Um, one of the things I've always looked at is conspiracy theories. And, and I remember as a child getting con conspiracy theories uh, thrown at me. And, and I have this problem with conspiracy theories, but there are areas in the world where conspiracy theories really have a hold on the general populace yeah and 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 i think there there you have when conspiracy theories thrive and i think we're seeing that in the united states where conspiracy theories are starting to bubble up more often than not um you you see a breakdown in trust in those societies yes yes um, and, and we, we need to take a break, but after the break, I want to talk about that, and I want to talk about the difference between faith and belief, and I think trust has something to do with that. Oh. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Beneath the Surface. Paul Morano here with my guest, Mr. Bob LeBlanc, talking about the, the all-important question, what is faith? And after the break, too, we will, we will delve into religious faith and why that's so important for our, for our own well-being. Okay, so we'll be back after this. Don't you go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Beneath the Surface. Paul Morano with my guest, Mr. Bob LeBlanc delving beneath the surface on the all-important question, what is faith? So before the break, we had talked about how, even before we talk about religion, how the human species is a believing species, that um, a, a large percentage of what we hold to be true, of what we're certain of, Came to us, came to us through faith, and still comes to us through faith. It it came to us through faith in other people. Yeah, we, in other we, people. We have faith exactly. in what they were saying. We're telling they were telling us the truth about what reality is. And and we believe them. And like yes. we said before before the break, it begins with believing our parents, and uh, and then teachers, and then experts, and then books, and you know maps, and all of that stuff. And as we get older, of course we begin to discern with that other level that we talked about human reason as to what we should hold on to and what we should discard, what we should not right. believe. Yeah. But we begin as believing species until we begin to discern truth from falsehood. It's not the other way around like radical skeptics would have you believe. We don't, we don't say, I'm not going to believe in anything until I can prove it. 
rationally yes. or empirically it doesn't work that way we humans would not we would not be yeah able to. we we it's, are we we are not pre-programmed uh machines but actually the interesting thing about is is that we're we're actually on the ground running and we yeah. we we haven't we don't have everything we need so we're mo we're moving and developing at the same time and yet you know, we, be we believe what we what our experience uh, tells us what our senses tell us and what other people around us for the most part tell us and 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 what happens too is there's an adaptation about what we believe as time goes on we, mm. we, we, what you described earlier is a kind of sifting through, okay, yeah. what I was told before about this sort of thing, I'm going to have to reevaluate that. And, and, that, and that often happens during adolescence or young adulthood, right? Where we I think it's a lifelong process. Oh, oh definitely. Really... No question. But after we, uh, I, I agree with that. But I think it really comes on strong during that time where you begin to question everything that your parents told you. And everything yeah. that you were brought up with, and so you, you start thinking your parents are pretty stupid. <laughs> well, that 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 too. But uh, before the break, we had mentioned the distinction between faith and belief. Well, you brought this up. I'm interested to hear what you're going to say here. Well, I think belief is more of an intellectual process. You believe something, uh, like a, a set of data, for example. I believe this happened or this will happen if this happens. I believe that. Faith is putting your trust in someone. Okay. So, so I would say the distinction is, and this is a, simpl a simplistic way of saying it, but you, you believe things or truths or doctrines, you have faith in persons, those who say them, those who tell you them. Right. Um, that kind of goes into... Um maybe a little bit because I see belief and faith as synonyms. Um, and, and it, I, I'm willing to work with your definition, but I think it closes off something that I want to explore here. Well, by... well you, you have to have trust in someone who's, who's giving you the, um, the data, the material, right? Right. To, right, a, cer but... to a certain degree, you, you can't, you can't begin with, I know this guy is a pathological liar. So I'm going to believe everything he says. It doesn't work that way. No, no, no. But, but uh, I, I want to talk about, um, because a lot of people use the words interchangeably. Yes. And, 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 and I, want to, I want to explore that ambiguity here for just a little bit, because I think it's very important uh, okay. about, uh, about this. Let's do it. Um, um, so, th especially when we're talking about the word belief. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's one sense where a religious person will use "I believe," and they're talking yeah. about certainty. They're 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 talking about this is this is I I think this is there's a certainty about the propositions that I'm speaking yeah. are true. Yeah, you you have some sort of certainty about that, but there's another sense that people use the word "I believe." And they're, they're saying, well, I'm expressing my opinion, but I'm not certain about this. So, okay. you know, they, a person will say, I think this is true, or they'll say, I believe I this, believe is, this true. is true, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. And, and, All right. So, and, so in that respect, there's a, there's a distinction to be made between belief and surety. Right, right. There's, there's certainty and uncertainty, and I think uh, belief is used – in, in those both senses, but I think the proper sense, and I'm going back to Joseph Pieper here, yeah. the proper sense of belief is, is the certitude that you're talking about. I and agree with that. And the improper sense of belief is this kind of uncertainty. I, I'm expressing an opinion here, and we may need right. to make this distinction here that we're, when we're talking about belief, uh, and I is, think is, that I think that religions, including Christianity, when they when they recite the creed and it begins with "I believe" and it continues "I believe in," "I believe in," "I believe in," is is we're talking about that sense of the word "I believe." I I am here because I am certain that at least that's yes. supposed to be. Uh, at least that's where where they hope to be. 
a certitude about these uh, religious dogmas. Yes, and and this this is so important, I think, uh, especially when we're we're talking about Christianity, um, and especially when we're talking about the Catholic faith. Right. Um, the, what what we're really expressing when we say I believe. Um, right, right. I think you're bringing up something huge because I think what you're trying to do now is distinguish between those who truly have the faith and the pew sitters that are sort of what they call, you know, what they have, they have, what do they call a fire insurance? Yes. That, that if there is a God, I don't want to go to hell, therefore I'll go through the motions. Uh, and maybe, you know, I kind of believe that, that he exists, but if he doesn't, then I wouldn't be surprised, right? That's, right. the, that's the weak kind of belief that many people that are not on fire with the faith have. Right. Okay. And, and, and this, this goes back to what you were talking about earlier. Okay. Um, um, we're, we're, we're not talking about belief in things. Right. Here. We're not talking about belief in an object, but rather trust in a person. And that's where I would say, in some, in, in the way that some people use these terms, that's what distinguishes belief from faith. You have faith and trust in a person, and, and in this respect, faith and trust are used interchangeably. They are, and and but I want to go into this this personal aspect of of this because okay. I think it's incredibly important, at least from my perspective. Okay. Um, you know. When we talk about the object of faith, why we believe this is true, and, and a lot of times people go back, well, because it comes from God, but it doesn't come to us directly from God. That is correct. Usually, it, it, usually. It, usually, yeah. usually, usually it, it happens that the faith that we receive, the object of faith that we receive we've received from somebody else, another person. No question, no question. And, 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 whether, and, whether it be persons that wrote the Bible or persons right. that are in authoritative positions within the church or persons that bring us up that have the faith, all of those are mediums to God uh, to, uh, that, 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 right, that hand on this faith. And, and, and so there's a process here that I wanna get into because especially when we talk about the Christian faith, we are taking something as a certainty, but we're having trust in, one, the person of Jesus Christ. We're having faith in that person, but we're also having faith in those people that have given that, giving us that object of faith to us, that, and, that are handing that down. And I think this is an important point. Catholics who understand their faith. Catholics have faith in these persons that give us the faith because they have faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, it, it seems like a circular argument, doesn't it? But it's so true because, because of their faith in Jesus Christ and what he established as his hierarchy and magisterium of the church to be with us until he comes back again, because our faith in Christ, we believe what he says and what he said then in his establishment of this, and what he continues to say through these people. Right, and, and, and I want to bring this up uh, because I bring it up a lot of times, but I want to bring it up here in this context. Okay. I don't believe that I could be a Christian unless I had faith in the divine institution of the church. Unless, there, unless I knew that the Holy Spirit was guiding this institution that are composed of human beings, which I don't have absolute faith in. How could you? <laughs> uh, you know, First, yeah. they're, they're sinful human beings, and we, we know this just by virtue of them being human. For, forget the scandals. Uh, you and I are sinful. We know they are until, until, right. Christ, until Christ comes back again. So, of course, we don't put faith, our faith in human beings. So there's this divine aspect of the church that I have faith in, and then that, that that comes into this idea that we have a magisterium at all. Yeah. How, what, what is this authority to teach yes. that these human beings have 
it doesn't come merely from another human being, but rather it comes from God. Yeah, this, and is, the reason, this is huge. This is huge. Yeah, the, Go ahead. the reason why I say this, the reason why I say this is because I don't believe that Jesus Christ, the God man, was an idiot. Would leave us orphans. Would leave us orphans. The fact that you know, he would just found this church that somehow right. presented this like iffy sort of faith that didn't get transmitted from generation to generation, but somewhere along the line, the, the fidelity, mm. it's like a recording yeah. well, that's thought, being re recorded over yeah. and over, and the fidelity of that recording over time starts degrading. The, the telephone game, every kid has played yes, this. Yes, absolutely. God, if, if Christ is God... Christ knows that after one or two generations, his message, which we need for salvation, human beings, his message will be corrupted. He knows that yes. unless, like you're, you're, you're alluding to, unless he creates this divine authority this, and establishes this magisterium through which he and his Holy Spirit will continue to lead and guide on faith and morals, because those are the two parts, that, that those are the two things necessary for salvation, to ensure that the message continues without error through, through, through generation and through centuries until he comes back again. You're absolutely, that's extremely reasonable. No God who is God would not establish this. Right. And so we have this, this object of faith that's passed down to us. Yes. And, and that, that we have certitude here yes. of, about this. And I want to kind of go into this process here because now it's very personal in the sense that I'm talking about how my faith okay. became very, very important, how I came into this belief about Jesus Christ. And just for the audience that doesn't know, you are a Catholic revert. Yes. You were, you were brought up Catholic as a child, then you strayed, and then as a young adult, you came back to the faith because of these reasons. All right. All right, right. right. Okay. And, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of discussing describing here a little bit of a psychological process here go for it um so what happens is 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 that i initially make this step and i actually recall this this step that i made i i made kind of like a skeptic's prayer okay um, um where where you know i don't know if god if you're out there but you know show me show me the way show me the path this 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 it, it, very it, first it, step is it like if you exist please show me yes that yes, kind of thing okay that kind of thing i mean i don't remember the exact words that i use but i remember laying on, down on my bed in the middle of the night and a mm. lot of a lot of things come to me in the middle of the night when you're lying awake and you're yeah. contemplating things yes and i'm going is god real and it, and it was sort of like a prayer. I said, if you're real, show yourself to me. Okay. And th in, in that, that prayer itself is like a very small step of faith in the first place. Yes. It, it, yes. It's, That's a good point. You have to, your heart has to be at least a tiny open. bit open to cracked in order to even do that. Yes. But, and, and, but, but you were so thirsty, like every human being is, whether they realize it or not, that you were able to do that. And that's a good thing. And, and so my faith journey has been a process like that, accepting, like I accept what the, the senses are, are conveying the truth to me, yes. accepting this supernatural reality, this, this word that comes down to us scripture tradition that comes down to us is this really true mm -hmm. and what happens is you start you start oh i'm testing this I'm, I'm i'm seeing this does this make sense does this does this scripture make sense does this have credibility that that is being passed down to us is this credible and it came down to me really intellectually it made a lot of sense this was the first step Hmm. Jesus Christ really did rise from the dead. I accept the message of the apostles that okay. was handed down to us. And that was the, the first sort of thing. Yes, Jesus did rise from the dead. The, the message that they gave was seemed to be very credible to me. And, and, and 
this is what we do when we look back at history. You yeah, know, this, any, any history, yeah. Any history. We say what these people wrote down about what happened in the past, somehow this is credible. Yeah. And so in, if you examine scripture and if you examine the tradition that the church hands down, it starts looking very, very credible. And you, and you start yeah. making steps. And I think then we need to make the next step, and I think, is, is that believing these witnesses because they have faith and that they have love of God. So it's, mm. it's, 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 it's the witness that people present to the fact that their lives were transformed by this person called Jesus Christ. And you see the Holy Spirit reside within them. And they're acting in ways that don't seem to follow a natural sort of path. Well, one obvious way is that most of them were, were martyred for this faith that Jesus rose from the dead, right? And, and examine this word martyr. It comes to us from the Greek word for witness. Yes. These people are witnesses to the supreme witness because Jesus mm -hmm. was also a witness of the Father. He's saying, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm trying to teach you about the Father. Yeah. And I'm a witness to him. So people who see me we'll see, see the him. Father. Exactly. And I think that, well, every apostle other than John was martyred. Right. And I think uh, every, how many, how many uh, decades or generations of popes were martyred? Like a whole, right. lo a whole lot of them. So all of these people who had this faith um, that were eyewitnesses and then passed on, filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, were actually willing to give their lives and be tortured for this particular truth because they knew uh, that uh, if you follow Christ and have faith in, in, in his resurrection and in him, that you will follow like a body to its head. Yeah, through this, they're, they're... this life to the next. People look at the church in the 20th century or maybe yeah. prior times, and they look at the church and they say it, it had all this power. And then they trace back to it and they say, well, this is all about control. The faith is just all about controlling you. The, the church is trying to control you. But the thing that you need to know about history is you need to know that the first apostles, the first Christians, they didn't come from the top. They came from the bottom. No question. They weren't imposing their faith on anybody. The reason why people believed what these apostles and these first Christians were talking about is that they gave everything yeah. up for it. And of course, that's incredible witness. That's happening today in the 20th and 21st centuries uh, all over the world that, right. that Christians are being persecuted and martyred like, martyred like no other time in history. So it's not like. Christians have the power and we're trying to, you know, empower, you know, uh, put down other people and their free will. It's the exact opposite. That's what's happening to Christians. So. And so, so going back to my faith story, yes. witnessing other people who had faith and the fact knowing something about these people, I started generating a trust about these people and the message that they were trying to convey. Because you trust in Christ and the Holy Spirit through them. Right, exactly. Yes, that's, that's I don't trust point. them as human beings simply because exactly. that's kind of crazy. That is, yeah. you know, and that's I, not a rational thing to do. I think a lot of people who don't understand, you know, what, what the church is or what Christianity is, believes that people are doing that, that they're trusting fallible, sinful human beings with what is necessary for salvation. And that's just silly. That's just silly. Yes, yes. We only we only have two minutes left, Bob. I want to I want to talk about one last thing uh, that uh, I have jotted down here, and that is faith as a supernatural virtue. Yes. Aristotle, who of course was pre-Christian, and uh, and many other philosophers who adhered to virtue ethics, held that there are many natural virtues that we can figure out as the mean between two extremes. And we can continue to practice them and practice them and practice them until they become second nature. So we become a virtuous person, which basically means we become a happier and a person um, 
that is uh, a, a healthier, more fulfilled human being, right? Yes. Through practicing the virtues, like a guitarist practices guitar, and finally he gets it, and he becomes a great, because he doesn't have to think about it. It becomes part of right. your character. Those are the natural virtues. Um, and in the one minute, one, in the less than one minute left, why don't you comment on the three supernatural virtues which you can't get on your own by virtue of just knowing them and practicing them. They have to be infused from above and we have to have an open heart to receive them. And those Wait. supernatural or theological virtues are faith, hope, and hope charity. And, and charity or love. Yeah, yeah or love. And, and we get this through the grace of God. We get, we get this as a gift. Yes. Now, now it's not, it's not part a, of our nature. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a little bit like the natural virtues in the fact that if you practice them, then you become more open to the grace that God mm. is trying to give you. And so this really permeates your entire being. And this is what we're talking about when we're talking about faith. For me, my faith experience, my faith journey has been a continual conversion. Yes. It's, 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 it's not something that is static that I received at one point and then yeah. doesn't develop from that point on. But rather, as I increase in my faith, I increase in hope, I increase in love. And, then all, the, and then all the natural virtues increase in you. Yes, it, it, okay. everything, everything right. goes kind of bundled together. And, it, and it's not kind of all at once, but rather right. a development that's occurring. On that note, we're going, to have to, we're going to have to end this show, but it was a great note to end on that faith is not something that is simply, okay, I believe and then I can do what I want. Faith is a process. It, it might begin somewhere. With, with many of us, it begins at a baby with our baptism, but with others, it begins with that yes when we, uh, when we decide to choose God. Uh, but you're right. That's the beginning. That's not the end. That's the beginning of the process that is a lifelong process of learning and recommitting each day of our lives to that faith in God. Bob LeBlanc, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for delving beneath the surface on this question, what is faith? Thank you, everybody, for listening. And if you are watching on video, thank you for watching. My name is Paul Morano. You've been watching or listening to Beneath the Surface. And I hope you join us again for another edition of Beneath the Surface. God be with you.